practice homework from chapter six, and uh, and we'll have a we'll have a quiz covering this stuff on Thursday. Okay, so so we left off on Friday, uh, just talking about how uh, you know basically using the standard normal table, right? So you know if I draw a line here at uh, let's say you know 1.01. .01, I would just go to my standard normal table. That's not the standard normal table. Um, okay, so, you know, 1.01, .01, and I would say 0.8438. This is the area shaded to the left. Well, this is, uh, this is great and all um, for the standard normal distribution. Okay. We often call the standard normal distribution the Z distribution. Okay. And the, uh, the mean of the standard normal distribution we know is equal to zero. And the standard deviation of the standard normal distribution is equal to one. So we'll say, um, so often this is written as mu is equal to zero, sigma is equal to one. And we will write the standard normal distribution as normal zero comma one. So this is the standard normal distribution. Okay. And uh, the great usefulness or great power of the normal distribution is that all normal distributions have the same shape. Okay, and so we can say something like uh, the heights of adult females in the U.S. follows a normal distribution. with a mean of 64, uh, we'll say 64 inches, and a standard deviation, uh, we'll say 2.8 inches. Okay, so, um, so we can write something like female heights, so the shorthand of writing this entire sentence can just be female heights follow normal 64 comma 2.8. Okay. I just had a just this deja vu. I didn't do this, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes um, my brain plays tricks on me. Every day, actually. <laughs> Such is life. <laughs> okay, so um, using this, we can um, we can apply things like the uh, empirical rule. And so I'll put right in the middle. What number goes in the middle then? 64. And then I will, uh, despite my terribly drawn thing, I will go out one standard deviation. 
So I'm going to go out one standard deviation. So that if I add one standard deviation to 64, well, where will I end up? 66.8. And if I go one standard deviation below, I will end up at 61.2. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll go out another standard deviation. And now I need the calculator. 66.8 plus 2.8 takes me to 69.6 and if I go out a third standard deviation plus 2.8 that takes me to 72.4 going in the opposite direction uh, which I'm recognizing is even more poorly drawn than it should be okay uh, 61.2 minus 2.8, I will say is 58.4, and if I subtract 2.8 off of that, I go down to 55.6. Okay, so uh, the empirical rule would tell us things like approximately 68% of uh, adult females in the U.S. are between, and I guess I'll color this in, Uh, uh, 61.2 inches and 66.8 inches. So about 5 foot 1 and 5 7 ish, a little bit a little bit narrower than that. We have about about 2 thirds of adult women in the US are between those heights. Okay? And then if we go out uh, a little bit further, we have about 95% between the next two numbers, 58.4 and 69.6. So this is, uh, you know, I want to color these in. And then 99.7, uh, so uh, are between, so almost everyone, are between uh, 55.6 and 72.4 inches, okay? And of course people um, are taller than, that's, you know, six foot and a, six feet and one half inch, basically, six feet and four tenths of an inch, and this is what, four foot, 10, no, 48, 4 foot 7, 4 foot 7 and 6 tenths of an inch, so 4, 4, 8 ish, okay? So, you know, we have people outside of that range, but, uh, but not very many, okay? And un rather uncommon. Okay, so this, uh, you know, the, uh, the normal distribution can be applied here, and, uh, and further, furthermore, um, if we take, if we know things come from a normal distribution, we can standardize the scores or standardize these measurements and use our standard normal table, okay? So uh, I'm gonna flip to the next slide. Do you guys, can you guys tell me what a z-score is? Do you guys remember what a z-score is? Okay, yeah, so, you know, we have our formula for z as x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. It's basically um, the distance from the mean expressed in standard deviations. Did you just suddenly get silent?
Okay, so our z-score is the distance from the mean expressed in standard deviations. So, we can say um, the height, female heights follow a normal distribution. So, um, if a woman is, you know, what is the z-score? of a woman who is, we will say, six foot, seven inches tall. Not six foot, <laughs> that's crazy tall. Um, five foot, seven inches tall, okay. Okay, so five, seven. What is the z-score of a woman who is five, seven? Okay, so five, seven would be 67 inches tall for those of as who are unfamiliar with American units. Okay, so this uh, we would say Z is equal to 67 minus 64 divided by 2.8. Three divided by 2.8 gives us 1.071. Okay. All right. So uh, now that we have this, basically, I can draw my normal model. I can throw in the middle, I can put in 64 and this value here of 67. Okay. And I can then ask something like, what percent of adult women are taller than 67 inches? Okay. Well, this is, uh, you know, I can t say this number 64, it's in the mean. So if I have um, z, z values here, okay, 64 corresponds to a z of 0, and 67 corresponds to a z of 1.071, okay? So effectively, when I ask what percentage of women are taller than 67 inches, um, effectively, I, I can just say, you know, how much is greater than z equal to 1.07? Okay, this is the uh, same answer as how much is greater than z equal to 1.071. .07, okay, so these two questions are going to give us the exact same answer. Okay. And so taking um, a value such as someone's height, we can turn it into a z-score and then and then answer answer this question. Okay. So what is the uh, the answer that we get here? Get uh, fourteen point two three percent. Is that what we got? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I can look up one point oh seven, and I get point eight five seven seven. And so I know the area to the left of sixty seven would be point eight five seven seven. The area to the right would be 1 minus that. Conversely, I could have just looked up negative 1.07 and found the area to the left. Okay? So, you know, when looking up z scores, you have to round off to uh, two decimal places.
Okay, we feeling good about this? Okay, um, we can flip this around. And so maybe I will, uh, I will draw the picture and I'll have you guys uh, work it out. And we'll turn it into a, uh, a clicker question here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, so we're gonna say heights uh, females still follow a normal distribution, mean of 64, standard deviation of 2.8. And so now notice this is a different question. I'm gonna say what height corresponds to the, we will say, uh, 40th percentile of heights. Okay, so this is a different question, and I'll draw the picture to help you out. So what I'm saying here is that I want to know what is this height so that the amount I have shaded here is 40%, okay? So, uh, so try that out. Uh, we'll, we'll make a clicker question out of it. I'm gonna have to uh, come up with some answer choices here. I have to figure this out myself. <laughs> I'll put up Sorry, I have to get this plugged in over here. Okay, do your best. You can talk to your neighbors. See if, uh, see if you can figure this out here. System fired up. Okay, people are clicking away here.
Okay, how are we doing? We'll say uh, 10 more seconds here. Okay. Okay, great. Let's see how we answered this. Okay. Well, 99 of you got it correct. Let's, uh, let's talk about how, how we get our answer here, okay? So many of you, um, so I wanna address each of these and, uh, and just wanna make sure everyone's, everyone's okay here. So, so I think a lot of you figured out that the correct move is to find the area that corresponds to a 40% shading, okay? So we go to our table, and we're looking, we're not going to look up 0 0.40, okay? Because that'll give us 0.6554. So this answer is not correct, because we, we will not look up uh, 0.4 and get that number, okay? So I tried to, um, so I, I drew this picture to illustrate that, you know, we have 40% shaded, okay? So have, by having 40% shaded, we know we are below the halfway point, right? Because if I drew a line at 64, the amount shaded would be 0.5, okay? So that should tell us right off the bat that the height that corresponds to the 40th percentile must be lower than 64 inches, okay? So this answer we know right off the bat cannot possibly be correct because that would be taller than 64 inches, which would, which should mean that corresponds to a height that's over the 50th percentile. So, uh, so what we have here is, you know, we're looking up the uh, the area that corresponds to the 40th percentile, which uh, when we look up, we're looking through all of these numbers. The value I can find that's closest to the 40th percentile is this one, 0 0.4013. Okay. The other number that's close is 0.3974, but between these two numbers, this one is closer, 0.4013 is closer. That corresponds to a z-score of negative 0.2, and it's in the column 05. So it corresponds to a z-score of negative 0.25. So the z, indeed, is equal to negative 0.25. Now, uh, those of you who chose c, looked at this and said, hey, I'm gonna do 64, I'm gonna subtract off 0.25, okay? Well, remember Z, this is the number of standard deviations we are from the mean, okay? So this is how many standard deviations we are from the mean, okay? So we have to remember each standard deviation is actually worth 2.8 inches, okay? So we're not gonna go down a quarter of an inch, we're gonna go down 0.25 of 2.8 inches, okay? And so one way we can solve this is using my equation for the z-score, I can just plug in the values that I have. So I know that z is negative 0.25, okay, so I'm gonna just plug in z is equal to negative 0.25, and then I'm gonna say, well, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. So all I'm doing is just plugging in the, my value negative 0.25 in for uh, z, okay? Well, I know what sigma is, all right, I'm sorry, I know what mu is, mu is 64. I also know what sigma is, sigma is 2.8. So I'm gonna just plug in this, so I have negative 0.25 is equal to x minus 64 over 2.8. So at this point, it's just solving for x. Multiply both sides by 2.8. I got 2.8 times negative 0.25 is equal to x minus 64, so I add 64 to both sides, and I get x. So here, this leads me to x is equal to 64 minus, I do, 2.8 times negative uh, 0.25, and I get negative, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, so negative 0.7, so 64 uh, plus a negative 7, and that gives me 
63.3. Okay, so good job. A lot of you guys figured that out. Um, and those of you who picked C, the um, you have to remember you can't just subtract off your z-score. You've got to um, exp turn it back into the uh, the units that we're using by saying each each standard deviation is worth 2.8 inches. Okay, 62.16 is uh, is kind of a, a number I threw out there. This is if you looked up 0.6554 and then use that to subtract it from 64. Okay, that's uh, not gonna work out either, okay? Are there any questions on this? Okay. Um, so let's, uh, well let's do a, a couple practice drills and um, Okay, so now here I'm going to talk about, uh, we will say, uh, house cats. I don't know what the average, what's the average weight of a house cat weight? Maybe eight pounds, nine pounds? 8.2 pounds with a standard deviation of 2.4. I don't think it, uh, they actually follow a normal distribution, but we're going to pretend that they do, okay? I think, I think it's right skewed. <laughs> I think we're going to have some fat cats, right? But we'll pretend that these are healthy, maybe feral cats. Uh, all right, so I'm going to just ask a, a few questions. I will say, uh, what percentage of cats weigh over 12 pounds. Okay. All right. We'll turn this on. Somebody clicked E on his or her clicker. That one is wrong. <laughs> or maybe it's a protest to say that none of the above are correct. Maybe that's what's going on.
All right, so we'll say uh, just a few more seconds here. We'll say, uh, I guess I'll go into one minute and 45 seconds. So 10 more seconds for our... Uh, Okay, there was 135 responses last time. I'm gonna hit stop here. What's going on? Click, 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 click. Okay, let's see. And the answer is, let's, let's, huh? Oh, yes, that is correct. Okay, well great, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, I will go over this. Uh, for those of you who picked uh, A or B, okay? So with A, you have to remember we are looking at over 12 pounds, okay? So when I draw my picture, a lot of times it's helpful to draw a picture. I'm gonna put 8.2 in the middle, and I'm going out to 12 pounds, and what I want is I want the area over 12 pounds. So area over 12 pounds goes to the right of 12 pounds. And so from our picture, we know that this must be less than one half. Okay, so we know that 94.29 um, is not gonna be the correct answer. But you are correct in that we have to go from our weight, 12 pounds, to a z-score. So we're gonna say 12 minus 8.2 divided by our standard deviation of 2.4. This gives me a z-score of 1.581 or something like that, right? 12 minus 8.2 divided by 2.4. Yeah, uh, 1.583, okay? All right, so, if, you know, uh, that's not the answer. This is the z-score, okay? So this is the z-score. This is um, the area to the left. When I look up, uh, 1.58 in the table. 1.58 gives me 0.9429. So the area to the left of 1.58 is indeed equal to 0.9429, but I want the area to the right. So I'm going to do uh, area to the right is equal to 1 minus 0.9429, which leaves me 0.0571. And this is my answer. Okay. So it looks like uh, a lot of you guys got that. So that's great. Okay. We're feeling good. So far, okay. All right. We'll do a, we'll do a little bit of a challenge problem here. Okay. This is our favorite. Okay, so we're gonna say, um, we looked at, uh, I don't know. What's a, what's a small dog? A Yorkie? Okay, so we'll look at uh, Yorkies. So, um, and, um, and we, we looked at their weights. Okay, now somehow in our, what we know, Okay, is that the, uh, I'm making up numbers here. So we'll say the 90th percentile of Yorkie weights. So these are Yorkshire Terriers, okay. Uh, I don't know, what's, the, what's a heavy Yorkie? What's heavy for a Yorkie? 13 pounds? That, that's probably like 99th percentile, I don't know. Uh, okay, we'll say 12.2 pounds. I'm completely making up these numbers here, okay? Um, and then we will say a Yorkie in the Yorkie weight, we will say uh, 10th percentile. Now let's, uh, let's make this interesting. You guys are get, get mad at me. Um, two and, uh, okay, two and a half percentile 
is, so what's a really lightweight Yorkie? 4.9 pounds. Okay, I've completely made up these weights. So if this does not reflect real life, don't get mad at me. Okay, based on this, what is the standard deviation of Yorkie weights? Uh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll try to give you some hints here, okay? You're going to have to use some algebra. And you will have two equations and two unknowns. Okay, your two unknowns are the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma, okay? So, uh, you just have to give me the standard deviation. I think that's actually the easier one to get, maybe, maybe not. Um, so we know that at 12.2 pounds, this is the 90th percentile, and at 4.9 pounds, that's the 2 and a half percentile. So I will shade in this portion. And then if I shade in, I'll say I'll have to say 90th percentile. OK. Are we able to do this? So I'm going to uh, make up some false answer choices here, or just maybe not false. I'll say I have to, some correct ones and some false ones. All right. La, 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 la. This one's hard. This one's hard. We got some, uh, we got nine people, ten people who got it right. Eleven. Got uh, people that are clicking away. So do as much as you can, and it should put you into a situation where you have two equations and two unknowns. And from that place, you might be able to solve for both of these quantities. Bless you. So I will start to solve part of this, okay? 
All right, so for, um, and if you're still working, that's totally okay, but I'm gonna just start giving you some hints to help you nudge, nudge you along the way, okay? So the 90th percentile, what z-score corresponds to the 90th percentile? The z that corresponds to the 90th percentile um, is 1.28, All right? I hope, I hope we've got that far, okay? So the z that corresponds to the 90th percentile is 1.28, and the z that corresponds to the two and a half percentile is negative 1.96, okay? Unless I've made a mistake here. Um, right, so the 90th percentile, I'm at 1.28.8997. And at the two and a half percentile, I'm at negative 1.96 at point zero two five zero. Okay. And I just want to make sure everyone's okay with that so far. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to plug in, I'm going to just set up the equation that I know. Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. So my first equation is going to be 1.28 is equal to x, the x is the measurement that I have, which is 12.2 minus the mean of mu divided by sigma. Okay, so this is my first equation. And my second equation is going to be negative 1.96 is equal to 4.9 minus the mean of mu, which I don't know, divided by sigma. Okay, so here I've got equation one, and here I have equation two. Two equations, two unknown values. I don't know mu, I don't know sigma. Can I get these? We should, we should be able to get these, okay. It's just, uh, just a bit of algebra, right? Okay, we're going to run out of time, so uh, I'm going to have to call time on this question here. So just do your best and take a guess. Do your best and take a guess. I'll, we'll go over the answer here. So we'll say, just click away. you got 10 seconds to click away. So click, click. Who's, who are my last uh, three or four people? Okay, here it comes. Three two, one, stop the clock. And let's take a look at our chart. Okay, oh, a lot of you guys got it, okay. The correct answer is B, okay. We have two equations, two unknowns. So this first one, I'm gonna just multiply both sides by sigma. If I multiply both sides by sigma, I'll get 1.28 sigma is equal to 12.2 minus the mean of mu. And if I multiply the second one by sigma, both sides, I'll get negative 1.96 sigma is equal to 4.9 minus mu, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just multiply this entire equation by a negative one, both sides by a negative one. So I will get plus 1.96 minus 4.9 plus a mu, okay? So both sides I've multiplied by negative one. I'm gonna add these two things together. So I'll get 1.28 plus 1.96 sigma, and I get 3.24 sigma is equal to 12.2 minus 4.9. 12.2 minus 4.9 gives me 7.3, and the two mu's will cancel each other out. So I have 3.24 sigma is equal to 7.3. So solving for sigma, I get 7.3 times 
divided by 3.24, which gives me 2.25. 7.3 divided by 3.24 gives me 2.25, and that is the answer that I want, okay? So once we uh, find the z that corresponds to these percentiles, we can put them into an equation, solve for the, un we'll have two equations with two unknowns, and we can solve for our two unknown values. So once I have the sigma, it's a matter of just going back and solving for the mean mu, okay? All right, we'll, uh, we'll end there. These are just some normal model problems, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday.